Today on Physically Spiritual, I have the joy to talk with Jackie Mulligan of Reform Wellness. We discuss how the Lord led her to start a Catholic wellness apostolate and the vision the Lord has given her for holistic health in the Catholic Church. Welcome to Physically Spiritual. I've been amazed by how much growing physically healthier has changed my spiritual life. I'm captivated by discovering the truth about my body and how it reveals God. Physically Spiritual is my attempt to harmonize and share what I've discovered. I'm your host, Andrew Reinhardt. Jackie, welcome to the show. Hi, Andrew. I like to start off every episode just asking the guests the way that the Lord brought about the work they're doing through their story. I feel like the Lord is a, you know, a, a gentle leader, and oftentimes what we're passionate about, the work we're called to, comes from His providence in our life. So what did the Lord do in your life to bring you to Reform Wellness? Uh, he showered me with grace. <laughs> um, no, thank you for having me and thank you for this question. Um, I will say that reform uh, has definitely been entrusted to me uh, by the grace of God. And it started off um, when I started to get quite sick. Um, I think in every way, definitely physically uh, through Lyme disease and some uh, adrenal dysregulation. Um, and also, um, in a sense, um, mentally, emotionally, uh, for from striving for the world, uh, for really feeling like no matter how hard I worked um, or how many um, degrees I acquired um, or how I climbed the corporate ladder, I was still hungry uh, and striving to be accepted and seen in the world uh, as I thought I was supposed to. And then I think spiritually, um, I there was a deep hunger. Uh, I certainly knew the Lord. I um, had the gift of being born and raised Catholic, though I did not understand fully um, really how to connect with the Lord um, in, a, in a very deep and intimate way outside of Sunday or outside of Mass. Um, and so there was this shift during the week that went back into self-reliance. Um, and so all of the comb the combination of all those that I just mentioned, um, I realized, uh, in, in my late twenties that I was, um, well, uh, to the world and healthy to the world on the outside, but inside I was just really suffering. And I knew deep down, um, that there was a better way to live, um, than striving and constant exhaustion or comparison. Uh, and that this this was unsustainable, uh, but truly that there was a better a better way. So, um, I was invited by my oldest sister. I'm one of seven, and uh, my older sister at the time, um, she was going through a, a great storm and 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 really difficult chapter in her own life, um, in which she chose to fully turn. Uh, over to the Lord. And it was so beautiful and inspiring. And so my already high level of respect for her and, and uh, admiration of her just increased even more. And she had recommended at the beginning of Lent uh, several years ago to um, commit to a daily holy hour. And for someone who was not attending a uh, a daily holy hour or praying a holy hour uh, or going even to daily mass at that point, um, it seemed like a very big ask and, and also something that was relatively unattainable. But so beautifully, she just said, you know, just go sit and be with the Lord in his presence. She knew I lived very close at that time to a perpetual adoration chapel. And I also knew that she uh, had these strengths and graces in a very difficult time that could only be explained with and through the Lord. And so I had this, this great trust that she knew what she was talking about. And, um, and so I listened, Andrew, I went every day and I didn't even know what to do in adoration. I, I don't even know when I first, um, started praying that I fully understood and believed that it was truly Jesus. Um, my my heart knew it, but it was like my head and my heart needed some time to connect. And with that, um, one hour turned into two hours, turned into, okay, what is the most time I could possibly spend here every day because I don't want to leave? And what happened in that time is that I 
learned who the Lord really was. And I learned who I am in the Lord and also who I am not. Um, and I really understood that I needed him in my life and central in my life for me to truly be well. And I don't just mean uh, like healed from Lyme's disease or, or healed from the striving, but to be well in every sense of, of the word. And so I just, I just sat there and invited him to number one, crush me with his mercy and love, um, give, give me a reminder of my identity in him. And then I gave him permission to reform my life. I just said, okay, it's all yours. Do what, what you will. Uh, please be gentle. Um, but I know your way is much better than mine. And, um, little by little, he helped me to reform my own life and to redefine health, uh, in a way where he is truly central to each and every part of it. Um, and then since then, I have been a daily communicant. Uh, I, the Lord is at the center of, of my life and, and my day. Uh, and now I've helped hundreds of thousands of people to put him at the, the center of their lives, knowing that to truly be well, um, we need him. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I can relate to so much of that from my own story too. I mean, mine kind of happened in the opposite order. Like the Lord found me in prayer and Eucharistic adoration when I was young. Um, and then I got unwell, but then realized through my journey of really weight loss, but then also sleep and working on stress and all this stuff, just how connected my physical and spiritual health was and how disintegrated my vision for discipleship was prior to that. Um, but uh, one of the things that I've noticed though, is I've had to go through this process of um, purification of my vision, right? Because when I started to get well, I just started consuming content, you know, like all these podcasts and books and videos of how to get healthy, how to get well. Um, and with that, at first, there were all kinds of visions for life and ideas about health that weren't, frankly, of the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you said like before the Lord, you had this encounter with the Lord, the average person on the street probably would have run into you and thought you were super healthy. Um, mm -hmm. But like after your encounter with the Lord, how did God refine refine your vision for what health really was yeah i mean at the time um i was eating very very clean and um lifting and and just able to move my body in in a way that um was uh very functional but but uh sh um yeah it was allowed me to do the freedom to do a lot of of things um that uh i wasn't previously capable of, which was really, uh, which was really a gift. Um, and also, so just like aesthetically, there was, there was physical health, um, to some degree. And I think that when I started to get really honest, um, just looking at all the different areas of my life, community relationship, um, my, my own personal relationship, um, both with myself and the Lord, um, with, um, sort of, even stress and uh, feeling like I had to earn rest or earn play and, and all these different elements of, uh, of, of life, I really started to understand that my why wasn't for Jesus. My why was for other reasons. It was, you know, um, you know, it just very frankly, sometimes it was for uh, my body composition to look a certain way. Sometimes it was for, um, freedom from, you know, a disordered relationship with food in certain periods of my life. It was uh, so that I could, you know, make a certain amount of money to feel successful. Like all these things that I really thought did indicate, um, you know, the health of, of, of a whole person. And very gently, the Lord showed me and reminded me that he is the only thing that is sustainable, uh, that is unchanging, um, and that re will really inform and fuel my why behind approaching um, all of these different aspects of my life, and that I didn't have to work so hard to figure out the formula. Uh, and now I don't think that there's a formula, Andrew, for health necessarily or heaven. I think that um, with the uh, constant changes of life, we have to ebb and flow uh, and, and be receptive to the ways that the Lord does invite us to, to grow. And so it, it's not always the same, certainly. 
But I did realize that when I really pared down and simplified my life in, in a lot of ways, that I didn't really have to work so hard in, in all of these areas to be well. That it was actually relatively simple, um, not easy, but simple, when my why and my lens was of the Lord. And um, and so that's sort of how he illuminated these, these areas. Uh, and some were one at a time, you know, sort of like, let's look at friendships, let's look at uh, our plate, let's look at our closet. Uh, and others were, an overhaul uh, in lots of areas all at once. The scripture that's been ringing in my heart for months is like, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, like Jesus is, is the formula, right? Uh, like it's the logos and, and whether it be through God's creation, through nature or by God's redemption in, in revelation, um, whether through the deposit of the faith or our own personal spirituality with Jesus is in the church, um, like God gives us the mold in the form of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's given me a lot of peace too, because there's an infinite amount of things I could learn about the way I function, right? Whether it be, you know, at one point I was like, I really need to start studying biology. Like I need to get serious about like doing graduate level biology studies so I can dig deeper into this stuff. And, and, you know, the Lord had to pull me back from that a little bit and say, you know, I'm not calling you to be a biologist. Like it's important that you know some of this stuff, but like, you know, kind of, where, where I'm working, where I'm, is really this integration of faith and wellness, but from the philosophical and theological side of things, <laughs> you know, so the Lord kind of told me like, I need you, you know, to one, be holy, but then two, to know your philosophy and theology really well. <laughs> um, but just that, that resting and, you know, the fact that God has the plan uh, and going to him and the way he reveals himself through others and through the church and through his revelation, um, is the path forward. Uh, so we, we have this experience of the Lord that changes your life. How does that then lead to reform wellness, this kind of integrative, um, functional Catholic wellness practice? Well, Andrew, um, I was in adoration on New Year's Eve, um, December 31st, 2015, into the morning of 2016. And I was really wrestling with the Lord because I had at this point um, done all that I thought I could uh, to reform my own life. And I sort of thought we were, we were done doing the work and like I was ready to graduate uh, in a sense. And it was like, well, now what? Now I, now I know this and, um, and now I can't unknow this. And I, I love you so much. And uh, I, I know I'm still overwhelmed by how much you love me. Um, you helped me to see that no one is disqualified from this call to wholeness and holiness. Uh, so sort of like, well, what do you want me to do about this? And I was pretty silent. Uh, I would say I was a bit somber uh, in prayer and and sort of just, but also open, sort of just ready to, to receive. And I was... Um, I was reading Matthew, um, particularly uh, chapter six, and um, verse 21 was really pivotal for me, um, where uh, the Lord says, for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. And I started to pray um, and really ask the Lord to reveal, where's what's my treasure? And, and where is my heart really? And um, on a on an earthly level, my treasure was my family uh, and, um, and and truly the work that I uh, knew I was called to do in, in the wellness, let's say, world. Um, and really, I knew that on a spiritual level, it was heaven and, um, and that my, my heart was in those things um, and those places. And so at the time, Andrew, I was living in California and... It was with this scripture that I realized I was being invited to return to those places um, where um, where my heart was and where my treasure uh, would then be uh, in doing the Lord's work. And so it was one of these moments where I was like, you couldn't possibly be asking me to return to New York right now. <laughs> um, I have a very comfortable, happy life in, in California. Um, and so what happened is I started to understand that one, 
my work was where my heart was, which was where, which was with the Lord and that to help others be well, uh, I needed to extend this invitation to put him at the center of their lives um, and to extend this, this happiness, to extend this freedom, to extend uh, this invitation to really let him inform all the areas of our, our lives and to return to simplicity. And for me, it was to return uh, to uh, those who loved me and 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 my support. Um, and so, really, um, it made no sense to me on paper because I thought, well, there's so much like health in California, and there's so many uh, modalities where where I could help people out here. There, it's a it's a lot more limited in, in New York. And so, it, it was just a really big leap of faith for a lot of reasons. Uh, going back to the East Coast. Um, but when I say that the floodgates opened with my yes, uh, that is an, an understatement where I, I just, um, I, I basically sold everything I, I owned and um, I, I moved back home and I trusted that the Lord had bigger plans for me and that I was going to continue to uh, work with people to invite uh, them to consider the Lord as we heal uh, their overall well-being. Um, and almost immediately, I uh, met the CFRs and uh, started working more with them, um, the Sisters of Life. Uh, and the Lord started to show me that certainly people in the world uh, have a lot more attention to their bodies and need to focus on the state of their soul uh, more. And that priests and religious, while there's such a beautiful attention and care for their soul, they needed to also tend to their bodies. And so, it was with, like with every yes, more was given. And then I started pivoting and, and forming uh, what I think the Lord was asking me to do. And uh, I know the Lord was asking me to do in, in reform. And so it was this like progressive unfolding of, of events. Uh, and, and, and it all happened with these big and small yeses, which I do really think is reflective of even our own um, faith journeys where we give this one big yes. So yes, Lord, I want you centra central in my life. And then we give all these small yeses as he, you know, uh, gives us more awareness and grace uh, as our capacity increases. So it was quite a journey and I'm still on the journey, but it's, uh, I, I'm just so grateful and it, it's not lost on me in any way that this was truly entrusted to me uh, and that it is, it's the Lord's ministry and, and I'm just one of the, the vessels uh, that he is using to, um, to carry out. Yeah. I'm glad it didn't start with a business plan. <laughs> it's like, the, I heard God speaking. I followed all this other yeah. stuff happened uh, and I just kept I mean, following. I do have my uh, my MBA and so I do have, have some wisdom and knowledge in, in how to do so. However, I will say that often people ask if I have a business coach and I will say, yes, his name is Jesus and he is the best <laughs> out there. Um, but yeah, it, it, it didn't. And honestly, every time we we as a team try to logically strategize and do what the world says you should do with business, like everything goes the opposite direction. And every time we go back to scripture and to the Lord's direction, it goes right on track. And so we at this point have fully surrendered to his lead uh, in every way. And God has the plan, the blueprints in the chapel. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, one of the things I've wrestled a lot with in doing this work is um, like making complex things simple because this world of like, the faith is so complicated one, but then human nature is also so complicated, you know, so there's just, um, even in an issue that might seem simple, like uh, stress management, there's just layers and layers and layers between, you know, the, the neurology of the stress response and the, you know, the hormones, the what's happening physiologically. Then there's also, you know, a whole theological reality of do not be afraid. And, 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 and then there's a whole psychological side of it too trauma, memory, um, attachment, like, like in each, each one of these particular areas, there's just such a depth and richness. So I struggle sometimes communicating things in a way that's actually useful. Uh, and I love at reform, you have these nine wellness pillars, uh, faith, play. Um, now I can't read my own writing, sleep, nutrition, uh, stress management, community, uh, space, functional movement, and personal growth. Um, 
and I love this because it's a way of capturing a whole lot of stuff, but also keeping it simple enough where someone could actually remember it. Um, mm -hmm. So how did these nine pillars uh, develop and, and how is that like central to what you do? They developed um, through a few different um, channels, but I will say first, in, it's in the, the the pillars are shown in the shape of a monstrance mm. um, because of um, the inspiration to bring the Lord central to um, our health and, and well-being, to define our health as our body and our soul, um, but really in an effort to rightly order our approach to health in general. And so I'm a, um, I, I, I taught for, for five years prior to uh, the second part of, of my journey. And so um, with my teaching background, I, I needed to sort of like make a lesson plan and, and to like simplify it first for myself, but also in an effort to say, if I was gonna share this with another person, how, how, how would I do so? And so in adoration, I, I sort of just mirrored uh, the, the monstrance and the chapel that I was praying at uh, was St. John the Evangelist in, in Sanitas, California. And this monstrance had eight pillars around, around the center with, with, uh, around Jesus at the center. And so I started, of course, with, with him, uh, at the center as faith. And then, um, through a combination of, um, my own education, um, through my own health experience, um, through observing many cultures, uh, and, um, and also reflecting on all the different experience I had with the clients I had worked with uh, up until this point, I started to define um, the pillars from what I knew was the collective way of defining health and, and well-being. And so... Um, it's kind of hard to narrow it all down into into eight other pillars outside of the Lord, but I I, I did trust um, that there you know there's some components to our health that we um, that we need to nurture and and tend to every day, like our nutrition and like our sleep, and there's others that are a little bit more broad, um, like community, like personal growth, and so with a lot of prayer, I I narrowed it down to to these nine. And I made sure that the eight around faith were the same size. And that's because I was always taught that one thing was more important than the other. And the more I was experimenting with my own health, I understood that certainly there are chapters where potentially nutrition or sleep or stress management are more important than let's say play uh, or functional movement. Um, but they also started getting all the blame for when I wasn't uh, as healthy or the things weren't going as well. And I realized like, this is not food's fault. Uh, this is not, you know, um, all these other things that I, I only like logically knew how to then uh, backtrack it at that time. And so I wanted them to all be the same size so that they were of equal importance. Uh, and also to be connected to the Lord so that they were informed by our relationship with him uh, and also his lens. And so it was it was just a beautiful moment of like, actually there's no better way to show this uh, than, than what's right in front of me um, because that's really how we, we approach health. And I think that people need a simplified approach uh, and an anthropology where they can remember and, and have a framework uh, on, on how to pursue this, but also to allow their relationship with the Lord to then inform these different areas in right order. Yeah, I, I totally jive with that. You know, my journey, I was almost 400 pounds when I started my health journey. And, you know, there was a, a big portion of time where diet was, like nutrition was it, you know, that first 100 pounds, like I couldn't exercise without injuring myself at one point. So, but then there was a period where exercise kind of came into the foreground. And at one point I'd gotten a sleep study done and sleep was in the foreground. And my most poignant memory was probably um, at one time really getting serious about daily meditation and in addition to my prayer and specifically how that affected stress in my life. And over the next couple weeks, I just spontaneously lost 10 more pounds and hadn't changed anything about anything else. Like it was a great just image of the way that just changing my relationship with stress had such a powerful effect on my body. Um, yeah. So I definitely, I, have in my experiences played out. And, and also another thing I've struggled with is, you know, just time. You only have so much time and energy. And something I work 
try to work in a lot and encourage other people to is the Pareto principle, the old 80, 20 rule where you get mm-hmm. 80% of, from the 20%. Um, you know, so in, in my experience, thinking of each one of these different pillars as like a different lever I could pull, you know, I could keep cranking on that nutrition lever up to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70%, but I'm going to get a diminishing return for my time and energy as I hyper-focus on that one area. But if I can do the most important 20% in each one of those areas, I'm going to spend less time in the long run and get a lot more effect. Um, yeah. So I, I love that image. You know, you're reminding me uh, of the call that we have, this invitation um, to give our our burdens uh, to the Lord and to, to rest in him. And as just as you were saying that, like, you know, 10 pounds just melted away. And immediately I just had this this image of like you sharing your yoke with the Lord and and not trying to carry it all on your own and just like giving him just an inch of your of your day uh, through the meditation. And oftentimes, especially when um, we do some functional lab testing in our uh, we have two courses, um, Reform Online, and then the the uh, subsequent classes dig to the roots. And we um, we literally dig to the physical and spiritual roots um, of our of our um, disease. And um, often we will find certainly some physical roots in, in gut dysbiosis and, and certain things happening in the gut. Um, but there are so many times where we see this connection to spiritual wounds that are right there with them. And nine times out of 10, Andrew, it is self-reliance and it is trying to fix it all and control it all. Um, and I don't, it reminds me so much of my own journey because it, I think that there is this somewhere that we learn in the world that if you're capable, you have to do it. And I, I think that like, if you can, you should. <laughs> it's like, just as you said earlier, like, you know, you may have gone back to school for all these other things. And the Lord was like, yeah, certainly you could, you are capable of achieving that. But is that what I'm asking you to do? And so I, I have this, this belief. And I think that a lot of people think that too, is that if it comes to them, that, that must be from the Lord, or that must be something that they need to do. But it's certainly something that we need to, to discern. And so um, that's really the premise of, of what, how this came to be for me was the shift from reliance on myself of like, I have to fix it. I have to figure it out. I have to heal this person. I, you know, I have to control it. Um, and back to your beautiful prayer in the beginning, really allowing our lady to show me the way. And, you know, Mary says with her fiat, let it be done. You know, she doesn't force it to be done or control it to be done. Um, it's it's really so beautiful because it's all slow and intentional and simple uh, when it's with the Lord. And if he wants it to be fast, he's going to do it in a way that you could never have, have sped it up, you know, in, in any way. Uh, but just this image of that lightning uh, f- for you, I think, is, is really just um, so metaphorically beautiful in that, like, that's really what life with the Lord is like. It's a, it's a huge uh, lightening of the load. And, and a lot of times, like you said, with physical weight uh, and, and no longer carrying things that are unnecessary. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to get into, I, I saw a beautiful vision in one of your emails recently of this Eucharistic wellness center. Um, mm-hmm. And it, the picture you shared was this beautiful space it looked like some gardening going on, a chapel, you know, but just a, a space both saturated in, I would say, Catholicism and in health. Not that they would ever be separate, but but just mm-hmm. very obviously a combination of both. And and just thinking of these pillars, it looked like a place where all these pillars are are going to be lived. But I think maybe ab- above all, a place where the community element can be really powerfully experienced. Um, so I just wonder if you could share this vision of this Eucharistic Wellness Center. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. Thank you for, for asking. This is something that the Lord has been um, putting in, uh, weaving together in my heart for several years. Um, when, I, when I first started Reform Online, our online course, um, it was so incredible, especially during the pandemic, to connect with thousands of people from all over the world virtually, like just the best gift. And um, as you can imagine, um, our team spent a lot of time online and a lot of time on Zoom um, connecting with with thousands of people. And um, 
the following year, I went on a solo trip to um, Medjugorje and um, I just had a, a really personal and sacred <laughs> encounter um, with uh, with Our Lady and, and just... Um, just received this invitation to continue to extend the heart of reform to the church. And I didn't really know what that meant exactly, Andrew. I just, I just accepted it and, and, and just said, oh, I'm going to pray about it. And, um, but just, just uh, had this desire um, to establish a place for the Lord to dwell in my own heart um, and, and also for others to do the same. And so almost like a, a deeper extension of what we were doing in reform. And then I went on a, later that year, um, I went on a, a silent retreat um, at the Monastery of Bethlehem in upstate New York, and um, it was completely silent. I, I was there for nine days, and it was, um, I was completely unplugged, and it was absolutely incredible. And I, I started to understand there amongst, as you sh I'm sure you can imagine many things, I, I realized that um, my heart was yearning for the simplicity of uh, a monastic lifestyle um, and, uh, and just more space for the Holy Spirit to dwell, both interiorly, but also externally. Um, and I... <laughs> I really felt like, oh, this is this must be what heaven is like because it, it I, I could feel the presence of the Lord around me everywhere, and it, it, it actually the only thing I can think of is that this is heavenly. And so with that, um, we I, I started to to kind of take these these few experiences um, from my pilgrimage and and, and from my silent retreat. And Dr. Bridget and I decided last year uh, to walk 300 miles um, uh, on the Camino. And um, so we, we started on St. Padre Pio's feast day at the end of September, and we walked through uh, October 15th, which was uh, our patroness, uh, St. Teresa of Avila's feast day. Uh, so we covered 300 miles, and throughout, one of our main prayer intentions was show us our next steps. You know, we're going to walk and allow you to, to accompany us uh, on our own sort of road to Emmaus, if you will, during the Camino. But also, um, you know, Lord, show us what your next steps are for reform, knowing that there's this desire to um, to create more space in our lives for you to dwell, but also for others. And this yearning to be more in person with people. And um, we started kind of weaving through lots of farmland and specifically seeing all these sheep and, and just like so much space. We were unplugged every day and we started noticing even our own health improving uh, dramatically during this time, but also that this was aligned to how we were created, uh, not to be tethered to our laptops or hunched over in our chairs. And um, we knew that having this rhythm um, of, of, of nature and experiencing the beauty of God's creation, just being outside was, um, was something that we, we really uh, wanted to extend to our community. And it's, it just came together that we wanted to uh, build a space um, where people could first uh, above all, encounter the Lord. Um, so to have Eucharistic adoration as, as often as, as possible available to them. Um, but also to experience from there all the other pillars. So to come to a place where they can eat food that is grown and raised there, um, where they could really rest uh, and be disconnected from the world, uh, to, to encounter community of like-minded people uh, who, who share the same desire to, to put Christ at the center, uh, to move their bodies in a simple but functional way. Um, and um, and to really just bask in the space and the grace uh, that the, that the Lord um, so deeply desires to extend to us, and so I t moved down to Virginia uh, to be closer to Dr. Bridget um, and also to pursue this um, this next chapter. And I can't say too much, but I can say that we are taking the next steps and um, we'll have more to share very soon, but that the Lord has truly blessed our continued yeses. Um, and so we're, we're well on our way. Praise God. I love that. I love to, because the space creates the opportunity where you can experience all the pillars simultaneously, right? Like the, we have this disintegrated mode of wellness. It's like, I'm going to meditate and then I'm going to go to the gym and then I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to, and there's this way that we understand like we almost have to have like a slot in our day for each 
different yeah, area. Yeah, we compartmentalize all of them. Yeah. But like in Christendom, it's like I was, you know, farming and the Angelus bell rang and it's like, I'm with other people. It's like, you just in it within your day, you're just doing all the pillars all the time. Um, 100%. So I think the more we can move toward that mode of, um, of having integrative approach, even within, you know, these integrative approaches, <laughs> uh, I think mm-hmm. the better. And that's why I love apostolates like soul core and Pietra fitness. Cause you're like getting so many of the pillars all at the same time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and it, and it sounds like this Eucharistic Wellness Center is going to be a place uh, of experience, and that's the pilgrimage, right? You were you basically it, spent a month in all three, all all uh, nine of these pillars mm-hmm. simultaneously. Um, yeah, I think it's a return to simplicity, Andrew, yeah. um, where we can continuously be nourished uh, spiritually and and physically, and and it doesn't it's not compartmentalized and it doesn't have to be work, but that it's just an extension of how how we live, and I think that that happens by inviting the Lord uh, to be central and. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, you know, I, I guess one thing it would, it, we should definitely mention here is that this was all inspired, even, even the beginning of my journey to reform from John 10, 10, realizing that we were called to uh, a life of abundance and, 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 and that's just such a gift and overwhelming. And, and like the, I think being fully alive, um, it is the joy and the suffering. It is both of those things. Like being fully alive is being able to experience every realm of the human emotion. Uh, and, and abundance is being able to experience all of those things. And um, I, I just, I wanted to be able to have the capacity to experience the joys and the sorrow and to know that the Lord has experienced all of them before me and that I could unite everything uh, to him. And I didn't have to experience any of this by myself. And I think that that was really the motive behind first the online course, but now even the Eucharistic Wellness Center of like, you can experience the the abundance, even even if sometimes the, the it could be humiliating uh, what we need to bring to the Lord, or if, if we're suffering physically, you know, I think that there's really beautiful um, grace and an opportunity uh, to experience that abundance uh, to return to to that freedom, and so I think it's uh, it's it's important to note as our our motive for um, inviting people to uh, to live in this way. Yeah. Jackie, thank you so much for coming on physically spiritual. I just want to give you some plugs before we're out of time. One, head over to reformwellness.co. You can find those courses Jackie mentioned earlier. Everything they're up to at Reform Wellness. They have a couple. Uh, I think really cool offerings coming up. We have Reform Your In and Advent series. It's uh, just a donation base. So you just give a donation, you get access to this uh, great uh, virtual event that's starting on November 30th. And then there's a Reform Online cohort, but with a specific focus on body image starting in January. Um, So head over to reformwellness.co. That body image one will be, I think, especially cool. Um, A personal thing in my journey, I remember when I was losing a bunch of weight, I, I was lighter than I had ever been since sixth grade. I was over 200 pounds in, in seventh grade. So I was the lightest I'd ever been since I was a child. And I remember looking in the mirror and still not being happy. Um, and at the time I was practicing a lot of fasting and realizing that like, like my body image was just all kinds of a mess, you know? Um, so even for the men out there, like a, a big part of my last couple of years has been working on this area of my life. Um, so just a plug for that online cohort on body image. And with that, Jackie, I'll let you have the last word. Oh, Andrew, thank you so much for having me. I am, I'm so grateful to share this uh, passion for the work the Lord has entrusted, uh, such similar desires in both of our hearts. So thank you for all that you do. And thank you for having me. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for listening to or watching Physically Spiritual. I'm so grateful for every moment you've given to this show. Please remember to subscribe, like, follow, and share the show. And if you want to support everything we're doing at Physically Spiritual or at Awaken Catholic, you can become a patron of the show at physicallyspiritual.com. To find anything I'm up to, head over to becominggift.com. God bless everyone.